know what it is about that song that absolutely gets me pumped up every single morning. Um, I good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. So I'm gonna know we're gonna we're gonna run through things very quickly because you guys know I like to spend time on a lot of the updates that we have. I also want to let you know in advance. There was a glitch today in uh, the data system that we use. So, so we, I look at data from a couple of different sources, um, but the data that I pull information from on a weekly basis is called Trend Graphics. Uh, there was a glitch only for Riverside County. So there's something going on with the Riverside MLS. Um, and so that data is not going to be 100% accurate for this week. I want to note that ahead of time, because if you're looking for Riverside data, we're going to go over some of the same stuff from last week and some of the trends from last week. Um, and then as that gets updated, then I will have that information uh, available for you guys. So a couple things uh, before we get started. This week, Friday, we have our trunk or treat. If you have not shared that with your clients, it is not too late. Right, we know that part of a good solid 36 touch campaign, right? A good solid 36 touch campaign that creates predictable results from our database includes a couple of things. One, a quarterly phone call, right? A call every 90 days for every single person where we avoid the call bias of only calling those individuals that we think might wanna buy or sell and we call everybody that is in our network, everybody that we know at least once every 90 days. Why? Because that's where we get our referrals, right? That gives us the opportunity to create that connection. Two, 26 emails a year, right? We can do that a, a number of ways. We can do that through the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture that is sending your clients uh, a, a customized kind of web page and neighborhood update about their neighborhood. You can do a monthly neighborhood nurture and do a monthly newsletter and then supplement it with a couple other items there. Um, using the client communication kits is a great way to do a monthly newsletter. Or as an example, all of the information, the industry updates that I talk about on this call, that's what I send my clients, right? Is exactly copied and pasted from what I am sharing with you guys uh, is, is what I like to send out in a newsletter uh, to my database, right? So the 26 emails a year, four calls, that brings us up to 30 touches. Four items of value, right? Four items of value. Those can be postcards. Those can be holiday cards. Those can be birthday cards. For postcards, we know that's our just listed and just sold um, are the most powerful. If you have their mailing address in command, we know we can send out those postcards directly from command, right? And then last but not least, two client events right? Two client events a year on that 36 touch, which is part of why we do client events that you can tack on to. It doesn't mean you have to go do your own client events. It's something as simple as sharing out the uh, trunk or tree and potentially sponsoring a car for the trunk or tree that we have going on this Friday. It's going to be on the second floor of Portos. It's going to go from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Great to invite uh, all of your clients to your friends and family. If you have kids, it's going to be a safe Halloween uh, activity up there. We had a lot of people that were involved in that uh, last year. We had a lot of traffic. We're anticipating more um, this year, so we're really excited about it. But we'll be on the second floor of Porto setting up about 3, 3.30. Um, although we recommend that if you are sponsoring a car, it's great to get here early um, so that you can already be parked, right? So you can already be parked um, along that first kind of row for that trunk of tree. And then we are expecting uh, the kids from the neighborhood and clients, um, kids to show up around 4 p.m. So wanted to remind you guys about that. One other thing, we do have our all partners meeting. Our all partners meeting is gonna be tomorrow. Um, as you all know, we are in renovation mode right now for full on upgrades. Our all partners meeting is gonna be via Zoom for this month only. Um, we'll be back in person uh, next month for that. So keep an eye out for uh, that link that is gonna be coming out to you as well. Um, and then a couple other things, we are gonna be having our vendor potluck, right? That happens uh, next month. And we're solidifying final details for our holiday party. So things are gonna move really quickly over the next kind of couple weeks. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update on that. I know some of you are just jumping on. 
Um, we are going to go over the weekly market update numbers. We're going to jump right in. Again, a reminder uh, that of the data that we have that we're going to be reviewing today. Um, one note is the data for Riverside County, for Riverside County only, uh, the Riverside County data share MLS is glitching. So we are not, uh, Riverside County is going to be the only county that we don't have this week's numbers for. So just wanted to go to note that as well. All right, so jumping right in, we know how we start with the TCPA. Please reminder to scrub your list, my friends. Um, looking at our showing time data. So I'm going to note, Showing time data has been pretty stagnant across the board for the last couple of weeks. Um, we will continue to kind of look at it, but we probably won't go into it as much in depth anymore. There's a couple factors that I always want to kind of bring into play here. One, we know that we are in a seasonality mode, right? We are in seasonality mode. The last quarter of the year, we tend to see that holiday dip. That happens again in the first quarter of the year. Um, so we are experiencing, if you see, we look at 2019, we started to see that little trickle down. We look at 2020, obviously this was a little bit different because everything was going through showing time in 2020. Um, and now we have open houses, we have all of this kind of coming back. Um, but it's been pretty stagnant the last couple of weeks here, um, which is a little bit more akin to what we saw in 2019 just a little bit lower. What does that tell us? It doesn't necessarily mean that there's not as many showings. Obviously, we still have a lot of traffic um, that's going on. Listings are still getting a lot of traffic. There's less, there's less inventory. Less inventory for people to look at means there might be less showings there, right? Especially if there's open houses again. Um, the secondary part of that is as we go into kind of these seasonality trends, we are seeing a, a drop in loan originations and loan applications that we talked about last week. Um, that also kind of comes into play here. So we'll continue to kind of monitor this. I'm um, just to put in perspective, it's down 11.8% from where we were at the baseline at the beginning of the year coming out of 2020. Looking at our LA County data. So Los Angeles County, the number of properties for sale month over month. So we're looking at September 1st to the 23rd compared to October 1st to the 23rd, where we are right now we've seen a 1.6% increase in the number of properties for sale, a 28.9% decrease in the number of properties that have sold. So I'm gonna note a couple of things here. When we look at this month over month, to see a an increase in the number of properties for sale, well, we see a decrease in the number of properties that have sold. This does not mean that all of a sudden we have you know, a huge uh, jump in the number of properties for sale. What it means is, as properties that have sold or are selling or decreasing, some of that inventory is sitting, which is the number of properties for sale. So we're seeing that kind of fluctuate there. Um, when we look at this same time a year ago, again, we're going to account for last year, seasonality did not play by the rules, right? We know, according to seasonality, the second and the third quarters tend to be the hottest quarters of the year. However, in 2020, we went into a, a pandemic which means that March, April, May, which tend to be very, very hot in real estate, were very, very low, right? We're very, very low because of the shutdown, because there was distrust about what was going on, because there was a lot of uncertainty. As that certainty was regained, as clients decided, hey, you know what, I do want to move forward, and there was more um, kind of cash reserves for certain communities, we saw a huge uptick in sales in the third and fourth quarter of the year, which is not typical. The third quarter, yes, but not in the fourth quarter, right? So when we look at a decline from uh, October of 2020 to 2021, when we see those number of properties for sales a decline of 20.9%, number of properties sold a decline of 29.9%, um, that is seasonality correcting itself. So there's two things we're looking at. Yes, we are seeing sales start to decline month over month, which is to be expected. Um, and we are seeing a dip from this same time last year across the county, right? We're seeing this across California as a whole, but looking at LA County specifically. Um, but I always want us to inspect and we're expecting, right? We never want to take the numbers at face value because those numbers are telling us a story about what happened. So a major dip like this of 20, 29% um, is not as major when we put into perspective 
that we had a, a pent up demand that was released in the fourth quarter of last year. Looking at our inventory trends. Now this is, we are seeing a month over month decline here. The number of new listings, we can see this decline here. So I'm gonna know, we started to see this decline here in July, right? July, uh, you know, uh, we see that kind of fluctuating down July, August, September. Not as severe, so I want you to see this right over here. So July, July, right? We saw a little bit of an uptick, in fact, in October of last year, and then a significant decline through the rest of the quarter, which is typical. So we are. it is likely that we'll see a little bit more of a severe decline as we go into that next month here, um, but we are seeing that new listings are down 24.7%. So that you can't see, that's right over here. A number of properties that have pended down 23.4%. Uh, looking at the same period of time last year, we are seeing that decline again, down 35.9% in number of new listings year over year. Number of properties pended down 23.4%. Again, we're seeing that release of pent up uh, or that, that return to a little bit normal, more normal seasonality. There's two factors I'm going to know here because one of the things we're going to talk about is what we're anticipating in 2022 in comparison to what 2021 um, has, what has occurred in 2021 when we look at the industry trends. Two factors we're looking at. Yes, we are looking at seasonality and we're looking at the factors of um, shifts in the economy, the Delta variant, um, the greater you know, number of vaccinations, supply chain issues. All of those things have impacts on what is happening in real estate. And so when we look at numbers like these, um, while I wanna make sure that I'm talking about seasonality here, because that's clearly a factor, um, knowing that loan originations are down, knowing that we anticipate you know, interest rates to kind of start to rise again, um, that's gonna be part of this conversation as well. Okay, so looking at our pricing trends, the average active price in Los Angeles County month over month, we are seeing a decline of 2.8%. The average sold price, we see an increase here, right? So we actually saw an increase from last month to this month of 5.6%. This is gonna be uh, important for us to pay attention to because we've seen that number uh, kind of stay pretty stagnant. And now we're seeing that number uh, start to show a little bit of an increase. We are anticipating that over the course of the next year in California, there is going to be a slight increase in prices, not as significant as it was in twenty uh, in this year and this last year um, that we've seen, but we are anticipating that increase. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, one of the numbers we always want to pay attention to, our average sold price year over year up 16.6%. If you are talking to homeowners that are considering selling in Los Angeles County, the question becomes, hey, the property values, the average sold price in LA County has gone up by 16.6% in the last year. Do you know the value of your home? Would you like to, right? Do you know the value of your home? Would you like to? This is the number that we pay attention to is that average sold price uh, year over year. We also know when we see an average active price decline, a secondary part of that conversation to create urgency right? They've anticipated or they we've seen a 16.6% increase in the average sold price year over year. However, month over month, we are starting to see a little bit of a decline. How long are, are those clients or those homeowners going to wait to take advantage of the equity they've gained before it starts to go down again, right? With that average active price declining. So that's important to create urgency, these are two very important numbers, our average sold price year over year, so they can see how much equity they've potentially gained in the last year for their home, and the average active price month over month, so they can see that decline that is happening month over month um, that is going to affect, you know, the if they were to put their home on the market now versus if they're going to put their home on the market a couple months from now, are they going to be losing some of the equity that they've gained by waiting? Uh, looking at our, our inventory, so our absorption rates, <coughs> we've been seeing this the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we're not at month end yet. And so absorption rate is very difficult to anticipate um, where it's going to end when we're looking month over month, because the way that it works is we are reporting on a week at a time. And what we know is 
not everything gets updated over the weekends, different holidays, things like that that are occurring. Mm. So we are seeing an increase here, 1.4 to 1.9. Now, we may end the month and it may actually end up being a little bit lower than that. Only time will tell because the last week of every single month, everybody is doing what? Scrambling to get sales closed, right? This is every escrow company, the last day of the month, everybody's scrambling to get that escrow closed. Every real estate office, right? The last couple of days of the month, we're anticipating, okay, what are the deals that we're supposed to close this month? What does this look like? Are they closing or are they pushing the next month? So this number at being 1.4 to 1.9, um, we won't have true clarity on this for another week so that we can really see where we end up uh, at the month of October. But we are seeing a little bit of an increase here in this absorption rate from 1.4 to 1.9. That does not move us anywhere near to a buyer's market. We have not left a seller's market even throughout the entire pandemic, right? So I want to put that in perspective here as well, is that we have stayed in this um, sort of seller's market where prices are high, inventory is low, um, demand is high, supply is low, uh, which is why we're seeing some of the trends across that. But this is a little bit of a bigger jump than we've seen across the last uh, couple of months. So we'll keep an eye on that here as well. Looking at our sold versus original list price uh, down, right? This is below 100% uh, and average days on market, not too big of a fluctuation. I do always want to talk about sold versus original list price when we see it being below 100%. Um, we know that, of course, we've been anticipating that when we go out and we get the value of a property, um, a big question here is, is it going to appraise? Now, I want to tell you guys the trend that I have been seeing on the back end of this, because we're dealing with, as you, as there's transaction issues that come up, right? Um, obviously, we, we kind of interface those so that we can guide you guys with that process. What we are seeing more and more, appraisals, not all of them are coming in, okay? So we do have um, times when you are making an offer and that offer is above the list price. And when the prices, that average active price, that average sold price is kind of continuing to go up um, at a very high or a fast rate, then we know that sometimes that, that price catches up and it appraises fine. However, we also know that financial institutions, especially as interest rates are fluctuating, as we see loan originations start going down, Financial institutions, when they are appraising a property, they are saying, what do we truly believe the value of this property is? So that if we had to take back the property, if the uh, client defaulted on their loan and we had to take back the property, do we believe in the value that we assigned it? Do we think this is a good investment for us? That's how financial institutions are trained to think. So when we look at these different factors that are happening in the market, we start seeing this sold versus original list price decline, we start seeing more appraisal issues. Now, I'll give you an example. We had an agent that came in, you know, the, the listing agent was very adamant. Um, it, it showed that it was highly likely once they had a, a chance to really go in and inspect the condition of the property, um, that it was highly likely that the value was not going to be there that the property was just not going to appraise, that it wasn't in the 100% best condition for it to fully appraise, right? Um, and so the client decided, hey, I don't wanna pay for an appraisal. I don't wanna move forward. I don't wanna uh, move forward on this property. I don't like the condition of it. It's not gonna appraise, et cetera. The listing agent was extremely adamant that they were gonna keep the EMD, the earnest money deposit. And we were representing the buyer in this particular transaction contingencies had not been removed. If this comes up, the first question I will always ask or Ed will ask or Rich will ask is has the inspection contingency been removed? The client is within their rights to exit a deal if the contingencies are still in place. It doesn't have to, you know, whether they want to not move forward with actually uh, completing an appraisal is absolutely up to them because they're choosing not to do so based, they, it can be based on condition of property. So I want you guys to know that because that has been a question on both the, the seller side and the buyer side that has continuously come up uh, and that we're seeing a lot because we're starting to see that tightening on the appraisals, right? Tightening on the appraisals. Um, if you do not believe the value is there, right? When you are making an offer on a property for your client, 
Talk to your client about that. Do they have the additional funds so that they can come over ask? And is that something that they're going to be willing to do? Right. Obviously, if it comes in a below below appraised value, um, below the list, uh, the accepted offer price, there's always that negotiation that can potentially take place. And yet we are seeing sellers kind of holding to their guns because they are not necessarily if they're not necessarily seeing this same kind of downward fluctuation in average active price because they're not watching those numbers. Right. It's up to the agent um, to help educate the client. Not all of them know exactly what's going on. And so we're seeing a lot of that disconnect that's happening right now. So if you were on the listing side, it's important to educate your client. If you don't think it's going to come in at appraised value, what is that contingency plan? What are they willing to do? It is way more difficult to tell a client or seller, hey, yes, we got offers at 750. You listed it at 700. We got offers at 750. They get very excited about that. They get very attached to that number. And then the appraisal doesn't come in and you're and there's backpedaling, right? Of trying to figure it out. If you can lead with, hey, this property appraised is 750, but based on the comps that are in the area, it is highly likely that it's not going to appraise over X, 700, 725, whatever that might be. Um, if this does not appraise, there is a chance the buyer may back out. So I want you to be prepared because we may want to negotiate at that point. Obviously, we're going to try to get you the best bet on it, um, but depending on how many buyers we have in the pool at that time, we will go back, look at all backup offers, see if there's anybody serious willing to come in out of ask. But this is what the, what's happening in the market. And so I want you to be clear, right? That is a conversation to have with the seller at the beginning of the transaction. So we're not scrambling in the middle because the value doesn't come in and now the buyers don't want to perform and all the backups are saying, hey, well, if it doesn't appraise, I don't want it, right? On the buyer side, it's also important to have that conversation. They were putting an offer at 750. It looks like uh, based on the comps that we're seeing in the area, this is probably what it's an account for. This is how much you would need to come in out of ask. Is that something that you're willing to do, right? We wanna have those conversations. Obviously we're gonna try to negotiate it down on the buyer side as well. And what would you like to do? So that's part of the reason I wanna talk about the sold versus original list price. Um, because as we are talking with our clients, it's important to have a handle on what the numbers are telling us in the market uh, and what are the objections that we can get mid-transaction because of it. Okay, looking at Orange County sales trends, our number of properties for sale up 0.9%, number of properties that have sold down 39.4%. This is a higher price point area. We are seeing a higher decline in the number of properties that are selling. That tends to happen as we move into jumbo loan territory, right? Higher price point means that not the same. Um, we don't necessarily have the same loan types that we're going to qualify for. Year over year, again, we're seeing uh, some of the effects of seasonality. Those, this is a, a pretty significant drop off. Uh, number of properties for sale down 41.2%. Number of properties sold down 45.8% year over year. Looking at our inventory trends in Orange County. So again, I want you to see the, the trends that we're seeing here, right? We see this decline starting in July. So right here, seasonality, we still saw that decline, but it, in July, we were still kind of high, right? Um, where we saw that decline a little bit earlier. This is where we start seeing seasonality getting back a little bit towards normal, right? We saw this influx, this number stayed a little bit high, a little longer here. And then it was a steep decline that we saw in terms of the number of new listings, which tends to happen at the end of the year. A great marketing piece to be utilizing right now. This can be a, whether it's an email that is going out to your clients, whether this is a flyer that you are marketing with. In your Michael Lewis Marketing Suite toolbox, in your Michael Lewis Marketing Suite toolbox, there is a marketing piece called the 11 reasons to sell during the holidays. The 11 reasons to sell during the holidays. I would create that, all you have to do is put your photo on it, right? It's already built into the toolbox. If you have your, your information already on there, then you literally just download it and it will have all of your information already populated from Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. Um, that is the marketing piece that if you are talking to homeowners, I would have it with me right now because chances are a lot of the objections that tend to occur at this point of the year is, well, I don't know if I wanna have my house on the market during the holidays. Well, where am I going to celebrate the holidays if my house is on the market? 
right? Or maybe I want to wait until I want to wait until January to list my property, or I'm going to wait until next year. Those are a lot of the objections right now. So it is a very great marketing piece to have to find those individuals that are very, very serious. Again, that's in Michael Lewis Marketing Suite, a toolbox for our KW agents on here. Uh, and that is the 11 reasons to sell during the holidays, right? So that we can get these, these at least we take advantage of some of the inventory that is out there as well. Okay, Orange County, average active price down 0.3% month over month. Average sold price up 4.8%. Right? We see these average active price. Again, the one we want to pay attention to is this average sold price year over year. And we see this average active price slight decline. This is a little bit more stagnant here. Um, and in fact, we saw a little bit of an increase in the number of in the for sale price right over here uh, last month. So this 21.3%, though, that's a significant, significant increase in average sold price. In Orange County homeowners, the average sold price in this area has gone up 21.3% in the last year. Do you know the value of your home? Would you like to? Creating urgency, right? The average active price we are seeing a month over month decline. How long are you going to wait to take advantage of the equity that you've gained in the last year? Right? That is, I repeat that every week. And I repeat it almost every county for a reason. That is a much more powerful script than are you thinking about selling your home, Right. When we lead with value, when we spark curiosity, when we create um, all of a sudden a, a curiosity around the value of their home, we are more likely to get into deeper conversation than simply asking somebody if they've thought about selling their home and that wall of defense goes up, right? This is how you start decreasing the wall. Would you be offended if I, I created a home valuation for you? right? Just out of curiosity, do you know the value of your home? That moniker, just out of curiosity, do you know the value of your home? Lowers defenses. That's an NLP script technique, right? Um, would you be offended if I put together a, a value of your home? Would you be offended if also decreases resistance, right? Again, that's a neuro-linguistic programming technique, NLP technique. So I say that again and again, because that is a that is a extremely powerful, very simple script to utilize when you're talking to homeowners and creating that curiosity. Um, looking at our absorption rates here, again, a bit of an increase here, 0.8 uh, to 1.3 months of inventory, 63.8% increase uh, in the closed sales versus the amount of inventory in the market. Um, I'm going to know Again, we're going to watch this at the end of the month. We know the last week of the month tends to see a little bit of that uptick that happens. Um, this does, again, not move us out of a seller's market. And last but not least for Orange County, days on market and sold versus list price. Days on market, not enough of a fluctuation here for us to be um, you know, digging into this at all. 17 to 18 days. Sold versus original list price has also dropped below 100% in Orange County. Everything I said about appraisals is going to come into play here for Orange County as well, right? Everything that I said is going to come into play across all counties. That's a trend that we are seeing when the sold versus original list price drops below 100%. And we've been hovering in the 100, 101, 102, 103% for the last couple of months. All right. I mentioned Riverside sales trends. I want to, I want to be really clear here as we go over this. Riverside is the only county that this data is a week behind. Okay, this data for, let me make sure we're on mute, my friends. Awesome. Um, Riverside County is the only county, as I mentioned, there's a glitch with data coming in from Riverside County. Um, with that being said, this data is looking at September 1st through the 16th through October 1st through the 16th versus um, this, the month where we're at right now, right? Versus looking through the 23rd, um, which is what we're looking at in every other county. So I'm gonna go over the trends, but we are a week behind here, just so that it's clear on Riverside County. Uh, number of properties for sale up 7%. This is one of the higher upticks uh, that we are seeing across the county so far. Number of properties sold down 43.8%. So this, this is also, we are seeing those decline in sales right now. Number, when we look at this a year ago, number of properties for sale down 12.3%. 
number of properties that are sold down 52.2%. Again, we're looking at kind of the effects of um, seasonality as well as everything else that is going on um, within this county. What we also know is Riverside County and San Bernardino County, they had a major uptick in um, new sales that were going on last year because of that price point. Right? So there was a lot of activity that happened in Riverside County. We also know that Riverside County uh, and Riverside in general, Riverside, San Bernardino, um, is one of the, a very interesting area that uh, I would anticipate we see some inventory kind of coming in around here. Um, not immediately, but I think there's a lot of opportunity to be had in Riverside County because we saw Riverside as, as a city, right, Riverside City, end up on the top 10 list of most at-risk cities in the United States at risk of forbearance. Their number of, of homeowners that were in some type of active forbearance plan was significantly higher than some of the other cities. And it was significantly higher than the national average. Um, so we know that Riverside as a city, San Bernardino as a city, um, these, are, these are areas that we saw that, that kind of just higher uptick um, where we may see either more loan modifications, or if people are not able to modify, uh, we may see those individuals needing to sell as we look at notice of default in these particular areas. So just putting that in perspective here. Um, okay, so this one here, uh, don't don't ask me why, but the new listings impended for Riverside County, that was the only data that did come through. Um, we are seeing an uptick here uh, in the number, of, I'm sorry, a decrease here um, in the number of new listings down 26.1%, number of properties pended down 22.7%. Um, this is, we look at what happened last year, right? We saw the major decline happen from October to November and then to December. I'm anticipating we're gonna see that similarity happening right over here as well, right? Again, that seasonality at play, but we saw this kind of decrease come a little bit earlier than usual here. Um, number of new listings year over year down 32.1%. Number of properties pended down 26%. Okay, now we're back to from the 1st to the 16th here. Um, but the average active price, we did see a decline of 3.2%. Average sales price increase month over month of 2.3%. The number that the two numbers I want us to pay attention to in pricing trends for Riverside County. The number of properties that have sold in Riverside County, this is up 18% year over year right? 18% year over year, down 3.2% month over month. The average sold price in Riverside County is up 18% year over year. Just out of curiosity, do you know the value of your home? Would you like to? Would you be offended if I prepared a, a, a value of your home, right? That's the conversation again. And this 3.2, we're seeing that month over month decline. That is all about creating that urgency once they are seeing the value that they've gained. Um, okay, looking at our absorption rates. This is a significant um, significant increase here, 1.1 to two months of inventory. That's an 80, that's almost double. Uh, that's almost double compared to where we were last month. Does not move us out of a seller's market, um, but it is a significant increase. So we're gonna, and it's a, it's a significant increase that happened fairly quickly. Um, so that's something we wanna kind of continue to monitor. Um, but again, does not move us anywhere near out of a seller's market. Um, days on market and sold versus original list price. Days on market, 18 to 21 days on market. Um, honestly, we ended last month at 20 days on market. So we'll see where we kind of end the month um, for Riverside County. But sold versus original list price. Reminder that this is last week's data. In the other two counties, we've dropped below this 100% mark. As of right now, we are not seeing that sold versus original list price drop below that 100% mark. However, this is last week's data, so that it could have changed over the last week. Um, again, appraisal issues. That's the major thing that I'm looking at when I see sold versus original list price start to decline um, is on open transactions, open escrows or escrows that you're opening is the potential for appraisal issues. On uh, conversations with sellers, it's the urgency to get their home listed before they see even more of a decline, 
right? It's also being prepared that what happens? The media has been talking about or everybody that, that thinks they understand the real estate market are saying, hey, well, properties are selling XXX above asking and they were, right? They were. And we're starting to see that fluctuation change a little bit, which seasonality and, you know, what we're seeing with interest rates is going to kind of kind of come into play here as well. Um, but that, again, we have to be cognizant of what is happening week over week, because what happens? Media outlets don't necessarily report the same stuff um, to the general public. And so by the time the clients are seeing this, this is, it's already months ahead, right? They don't see the same stuff that, that we see all the time. Okay, looking at San Bernardino County, our last county here, number of properties for sale month over month up 0.9%, sold down 33.9%. When we look at this from a year ago, um, what's interesting here is the number of properties for sale. This is the only county that we've seen an uptick in this number of 23.3% a downtick in the number of properties sold of 37.9%. Uh, this is this is uh, interesting as our lowest price point county that we are seeing more properties for sale in San Bernardino County from a year ago. Okay, new listings down 30.3% 30 30 week over week, down 28.6% year over year. I anticipate in the next two months, we're gonna see that greater fluctuation similar to what we've seen right over here. And then that'll grow again as we enter the end of the year. This again is why that marketing piece, reasons to sell, the 11 reasons to sell during the holidays is gonna be so important. Also, this is the time to get in conversation with all of those sellers, because here's the thing. We know real estate is a cycle, right? We know real estate is a cycle. People don't just get lucky at the beginning of the year to all of a sudden get in contact with sellers and everybody's listing at the beginning of the year and we see these numbers jump up, right? It's the preparation that occurs over here so that these homes, so that we have those conversations in advance so that we're listing those homes in January, right? So that we're listing those homes in January or listing some of them early. So right now is the time to be having those conversations with the sellers. Um, number of properties pending, down 24.8% month over month in San Bernardino County, down 17.8% year over year as well. Pricing trends, um, we are seeing that average active price, a decline of 0.7%. Average sold price decline of 2.3% in this county as well. Again, the number we want to pay attention to here, average sold price and average active price month over month, average sold price year over year. In San Bernardino County, the average sold price has increased by 12.8% over the last year. Just out of curiosity, do you know the value of your home? Would you like to, right? Um, average active price up 0.7%. Uh, looking at our absorption rates here, we've been at about 1.2, 1.3%. This is an uptick about 46.9%. Again, doesn't take us out, out of a seller's market, but we have seen upticks in this inventory absorption rate across all four counties now. Um, I would say this we're starting to see this as a trend. Again, we'll see where we end at the end of the month. And last but not least, days on market, 15.8% um, increase. Not a huge fluctuation. We'll see where we end up at the end of the month. Um, but the sold versus original list price, this is a 3% drop to 98%. Again appraisal issues, right? I'm anticipating appraisal issues. Um, the more we get ahead of those things, the more we get ahead of those conversations, the more we can anticipate them, the more we can stack the deck in our favor. So I'm telling you what we're seeing and what we're anticipating more of. And because we're talking about it now, it gives you the opportunity to stack that deck in your favor. Okay, so going over a couple of key things here. I talked about this last week. We've seen mortgage originations dropping as interest rates rise. This is something that the industry is starting to forecast. I've gone and talked to, um, you know, I've talked to a couple of lenders because I always want to get what are they feeling? What are they seeing? Um, and we're seeing something similar here. Now, interest rates are still fluctuating, though, right? Supply chain issues are going to uh, come. In, sorry, oop, I jumped up too much. Supply chain issues are going to come into effect here as well. Right. Um, but we always look at what is happening in the industry. Zillow is not buying any more homes for the rest of the year. Now, given the rest of the year is two months in a week. Right. However, however, when I look at a big institutional investor 
and I see them making a decision like this, I'm like, great, what is it they think is going on with the market? Um, a couple things here. Part of this, backlogs with renovating homes. There are supply chain issues, right? There's supply chain issues. We saw it firsthand. We were trying to order wood floors so that we can put wood floors. We had supply chain issues. We got the wood floors, but we had supply chain issues, right? So we're seeing that as well. Um, that is one of the things that, that you know these institutional investors are seeing that comes into play um, with, with some of these conversations as well, right? Okay, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, there is an ADU grant program at calhafa.ca.gov for pre-development ADU costs. It goes up to 25K. If you, this is great. The reason that I share this information, right, is I, we know that there's only one secret in this business. I say it a lot. That secret is people need to know, like, and trust you. They have to find you the most credible person that they can think of when they think of real estate. They have to think of you first and you have to be easy to reach. When we do it, 36 touch campaign. The reason that we do the 36 touch campaign is so that when they think of real estate, they think of you. Mind share equals market share. How do we help you position yourself as the most credible person? We give you the most up-to-date information possible. Two things, learning to speak the language of real estate, which is why we go over the numbers every single week right, is because that allows you to answer the question, how's the market in a very concise way, not what's well, a seller's market, what's well, a buyer's market, whatever that might be, right, but all of a sudden we're able to talk about, hey, well, this is what we're seeing from a pricing trend, hey, this is what we're seeing, you know, with inventory, this is how it's going to affect you as a buyer, this is how it's going to affect you as a seller, and industry updates that are going to be beneficial to them. That's what clients want from an expert in, in the business, Right. So that's part of why we share these updates and we continue to share it again and again is because this is to equip you with more tools in your toolbox that you can talk about. I'm going to know half the stuff that I share here with you guys is literally that you can copy and paste when we post the slides every day. Slides are posted by 6 p.m. every day. Right. Um, when these slides are posted every day, half of this information I copy and paste. And this is what I send out in a monthly newsletter is I take whatever was the most important updates and I send that out in a newsletter to my clients, right? Industry updates. ADU grant program of up to 25K for pre-development ADU costs. Um, obviously not everybody's gonna qualify, but it is a program that is available if you have clients that are looking to add value to their home by constructing an ADU, this is the website for it. Um, 2022 CAR, so CAR released their housing market forecast. Um, we've been talking about this, but they are anticipating a slight decline in existing home sales of 5.2% next year in California. Uh, they are also, so don't ask me why 5.2 ended up being the percentage of the, the week here, but a 5.2% decline in uh, the number of existing SFR home sales. The California median home price is still forecasted to rise 5.2% in 2022. However, last year or this year, we had a 20.3% increase, right? A 20.3% increase. So we're still anticipating an increase across the board in the median home price. Because we're also talking about the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan has surpassed that 3% threshold and mortgage applications are trending down. This is how we create urgency with buyers, right? Buyers that want to take advantage of the low interest rate and are saying, hey, we want to wait until prices go down. We want to wait until prices drop. Right now, we are seeing a slight decrease in prices right now. However, we're anticipating a 5.2% increase over the next year. And if we're already seeing changes in the interest rate, how long are they going to wait to move forward um, and not take advantage of that low interest rate that they have right now? right? This is why it's important to look at these numbers. Um, Senate Bill 9, we know uh, Senate Bill 9 passed. There's no real update here aside from this was a, a vote to basically open suburbs to development, allowing uh, two to four units on lots that are reserved for single family homes. This is going to be dependent on the plot size. Uh, this is also similar to when ADUs came out. This is going to be something that takes time to kind of reach the different, um, you know, the different places. CRMLS changes, I've had this on here for a couple of weeks now. This is just your weekly reminder to go into your CRMLS, adjust your member settings 
so that you have your preferred contact information on your listings, right? Your preferred contact information for your listings. Um, moratorium, we know the foreclosure moratorium is expired. We have seen um, the forbearances, the active forbearances have declined. This last week was actually the, the least, the slowest decline that we've seen over the last couple of months. So we're probably getting to about a good baseline in terms of how many true active forbearances we have um, right now. So this was just, it's good to kind of know that. Um, last but not least, this mortgage relief update. There is no change on the website, right? There is no change. This was submitted to the California, uh, to the U.S. Treasury by California on August 19th. There is a website for it. We know that between 20 to 40,000 homes will be sold. They can access up to $80,000 per home for mortgage relief. It'll be paid once they do the application process. If they qualify, it will be paid directly to the uh, mortgage institution or the financial institution. If your clients are waiting on this mortgage relief program, um, I would still refer them to the website. Just know nothing has changed. Applications have not opened up yet. Right, so that's kind of where we're at here. Um, segments, I do want to talk about the, oh, well, well, reminder of the trunk of tree and then we'll get into segments. Reminder of our trunk of tree. On Friday, I talked about this at the beginning. I'm going to say it again. Uh, it is, the flyers are out and available for you. We've shared them out a couple of times. They're on the hub. They've been sent on a text message um, and via the email that I sent to you guys on Friday. Reminder, this is a great way to have a client event that you're sending out to the clients. Client events are about coming from contribution and creating something for the community, not always real estate related, right? The Trungle Tree is a great community event. Um, if you are gonna be having a car that you're sponsoring, which if you're inviting your clients is a great idea to have um, so that they can kind of come and visit with you, right? We will be setting up around 3, 3.30. Um, and it's, we decorate the trunk of our car. We open up the trunk. We have the candy available. We'll be in costumes and things. And we hand out candy to the community that comes. And we had the mayor of Downey already comment on this. We came out in the Downey Latino News last year. Um, we're going to have, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of photos and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's just, we've been doing um, a trick or treat type event for years. We used to do the door decorating and cubicle decorating and have people come into the office. Last year, we switched it to a trunk or treat. Um, to have it be like a, a touchless, safe event for COVID. And so we're continuing that tradition. Um, we're really excited about it. That's going to be this Friday from 4 to 6. Um, team wins. If you didn't make it to the last one, if you are looking at, you know, building a team, if that is something that is of interest to you, there's going to be these conferences that are going on once a month. The next one is November 8th, right? The next one is November 8th. 10 to 12, 12, I'm sorry, that's 12 p.m. It's 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, and we will go ahead and make sure we get that sent out for you, my friends. But I, if you're looking at building a team, this is a great kind of you know model for that. It was phenomenal for those that had a chance to make the last one. Um, but this is gonna be a really good kind of step-by-step -step for building a team. Also, new homes. We know that despite the ongoing supply chain issues, uh, California and the United States in general is anticipating an uptick in new homes, right? In the number of new homes that are developed. There is a phenomenal builder developer realtor education course that is launched by our KW New Homes Division that is going to be happening on December 14th and 15th. If this is a segment of the market that you are interested in, you do not want to miss this course. We are going from a general market to a specialized market where we really understand that if this is a niche, a niche for us, we want to be the experts in that niche. It's a different conversation than selling something that's pre-existing, right? Um, so this is a phenomenal, phenomenal course that I highly recommend. And last but not least, um, a reminder, the social media calendar, the October one has been out. The November one is probably going to launch within the next week. We will share that out for you as well. And your quarter four personally branded magazine, is available in KW Designs for you if you would like to send this out for your clients. So a lot of information. We have a lot that we're gonna be going over tomorrow for our team meeting uh, tomorrow via Zoom. It is earlier than usual. I know we usually do a 3 p.m. team meeting. We got requests from you guys that a lot of you are picking up kids at three. 
right? Now that kids are back in school, we want to make sure that we're accommodating everyone. So we are going to be doing a different time. Uh, tomorrow, C meeting will be at 11 a.m., right? 11 a.m., 11 or 11.30. We'll send that out in text. I believe it's at 11 a.m., um, but we will send that out. It'll be a little bit different, and we're going to be going on Zoom. So we have a lot to cover um, as well. But with that, I hope you guys have an absolutely, absolutely phenomenal day, my friends. Make it a great day. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Monica. Bye.